If you don't have a Bible, I encourage you to use one there in the pew. Take one out there and look with us in the Word of God today. John chapter 1, that can be found on page 909 in the pew Bible. 909 in the pew Bible. Boy, the, the music this morning has been awesome. I love Christmas music. And, uh, but this morning, it's especially been really, really well. I mean, all the stuff we already know, all the traditional hymns that we've sung, and then the choir song and Angie's song, just great, great. I love it. And it just kind of puts you in the, the, uh, the season mood, you know, to get excited about Christmas and, and Jesus' birth. And this morning, that's what we're going to talk about. You know, I wrote down quickly as she was singing there a phrase from her song. It's, Son of God, Son of Man, there before the world began. And uh, that, that says a lot. And that's exactly what we're going to look at this morning here in John chapter 1. We're talking about the name this month, the name. Last week, we looked at the name Jesus, the, the verse that she quoted. Uh, there in between those uh, verses there was uh, that Jesus, his name would be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And the name Jesus means God our Savior. And this morning, we're going to look at the name, the Word. The Word. That seems like an interesting name, a, an odd name, but nonetheless, that's how the Bible refers to Jesus actually many times is as the word. You know, a name can say so much. Now, some of us, when we, there's names that we know that when we hear them, they have negative connotations with them. There's somebody we know that has that name. There is some kind of bug up here right now, so I'm not just, you know, I'm not getting in the spirit or anything. There's, there's something flying around. But uh, There are some names that we hear when we hear them that has a negative connotation. There are other names that when we hear them, it puts a smile on our face because of the way those people have made us feel or made others feel or what they've done or have not done. So names can mean a lot, and they, they give us certain feelings. But the meaning of a name is, is always mo fascinating to me. Um, more than how we feel about a name, you know, we, we talked last week about what names mean, and we talked about several of us, what our names mean. Is there anybody who did not know last week that maybe because of what we talked about, you went and looked it up and now you know and you'd like to share it? Or maybe you already knew it and you'd like to share it that didn't share last week. What does your name mean? Anybody want to share that with us? I can't call on you all at once, please. <laughs> anybody? All right, well, I'll tell my brother Chris. Christ bearer. Christ bearer. That's a good one. Miss Vicky. Victory. That's good. Anyone else? Angie. Okay, well. <laughs> and Tom and Sandy said. All right. And Mike, too. <laughs> he would, too. Uh, all right. Oh, yeah. Good. That's a good one. Anyone else? B. Oh, B. All right. Well, that's fun. Okay. They also sting, so be careful with that. Miss Irma, did you have your hand up? Warrior, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, Daniel, her husband. God is my judge. That's awesome. All right, Miss Erin. Ireland. Ireland. Erin Grubaugh. See, I mixed uh, Irish and Spanish there. That's good. All right. You can tell I'm, I need to work on that one. I'm pretty good at Scottish accents. You know I can talk in Scottish, but not very good in, in Irish. Okay, let's move on. But yeah, our names mean so many different things. Ireland, that's fascinating. Our names mean so many different things. And when God has called Jesus, his only begotten son, by different names, they all have a meaning to them. And that's why this month we're going to dig a little deeper and find out all these names of Jesus and what they mean. Because you see, Jesus' names tell us who he is and what he came for. All of the different ways the scripture refers to him all have a specific meaning. None of them are on accident. And so, you know, God has expressed himself to man through his son. The Son of God is how God chose to express himself to us. The question you and I have to ask right now is this. Is God's Son today, 1130, Sunday morning, making a difference in my life? 
He may have made a difference in your salvation. If you're not saved, I pray that today you will be saved. And, and maybe, probably a lot of us in here have the testimony that there was a day when he saved our soul and that has made an eternal difference in our life. But you know, it doesn't stop there. That's the very beginning. Is he making right now a difference, a difference in my life? Is there something different about me today because Jesus is in my heart? Is God's son making a difference in my life? Today we'll see how completely and clearly God expressed himself to man through his son and how that affects us now and forever. Let's look at the word of God here. John chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 1 through 14. Okay, very familiar passage of scripture here. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. The Bible says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Notice the capital W's there in the words word. Verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He, John, was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Shall we pray this morning? Our Father, we are so um, thrilled this morning what our hearts have been made to feel as we have uh, lifted our voices in song about our Savior, about the Creator, about you, God, coming to this earth in the form of a man and how it brought hope to mankind, and it brought salvation to all who will believe and receive. Lord, I prayed this morning that if there's anyone here who does not know Christ as their Savior, that today the Holy Spirit will convict their heart, and that they will see their need for Jesus, not just for knowing about him, not just for liking him or being a fan of his, but Lord, knowing him personally as Savior humbling themselves, and reaching out to Jesus as their Savior. Lord, I pray that you would do that this morning. And Father, for those who know Christ today, they've been saved. I ask that we would uh, see in the Scripture this morning, Lord, see in your Word how that your Son, Jesus, has made an eternal difference in our life and how he desires to interact with us and go through our life with us second by second and make our life here and now different. And through us, make a difference in others. And we ask these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. So we've seen this morning how a name has a meaning. And, and God has given his only begotten son specific names for a purpose. And this morning we have seen in, in John chapter 1 several times, in fact in verse 1 and in verse 14 it refers to Jesus as the word the Bible also refers to him as the word in 1st John 1 1 in 1st John 5 7 and in Revelation 19 13 all of those times the Bible refers to Jesus as the word now the Greek word here I'm not a Greek scholar but I know enough to be dangerous uh, the, the Greek word here logos it looks like logos but it's logos it, that word means the divine expression. The divine expression. How God chose to express himself to mankind. 
And the way that God communicated to you and I that not only that he is there and that he is creator and that he brings light into every heart of every man that is born into this world and that he is the savior and that he wants to dwell with us and become one with us all by his grace, the way that God chose to communicate to us those facts and those truths are through the word, his son. The divine expression, the substance or essential nature of who God is, is all found in Jesus Christ, the Word. You know, God is a spirit. John 4, 24 tells us that God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But as finite human beings, you and I, we have a difficult time grasping the spirit world or the spirit realm, if you will. Brother Mark has been talking about that in the beginning of our study on Wednesday night, uh, how angels are spiritual beings and how it's hard for us to grasp that whole idea there because all we know is this physical realm as far as what we can see. And so it's hard as humans to grasp the spiritual realm, but God is a spirit. So how would we uh, understand God? How would we grasp who he is and what he is? How would we understand who God is? Well, the way God chose to do that, the way he chose to express himself is through a human because we get that. We understand that it has a form and that it has a face and it has a voice and it has hands and feet. And so we can understand a human being. Spirits are very hard for us to understand. So God was gracious enough to us to place himself in human flesh, be born into this world, and reveal himself to us, hear this, communicate himself through the word. We communicate through word. And God chose to communicate through the word himself. In human flesh. We sang this morning uh, for our, uh, after the offertory, we sang, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, verse 181, or uh, hymn number 181. And um, you can turn there if you want to look at it with me. You don't have to. I'll read. The second verse, particularly here, I think does a good job of summing up this whole God becoming flesh. Listen carefully to how the, the hymn writer wrote this. Christ, by highest heaven adored, Christ, the everlasting Lord. Now, we saw that in verses 1 and 2. John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 tell us he's everlasting. It continues, late in time, behold him come, referring to the the long time that the Israelites waited for their Messiah. And God, the Bible says he came in the fullness of time. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb, as prophesied in the Old Testament. And next it says, veiled in flesh, the Godhead see. I like that phrase right there. That's a good way of putting what God did when he communicated through the word. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see. We can see God in flesh in his son, Jesus. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see. Hail the incarnate deity. God incarnate God became man and then it says pleased as man with men to dwell verse 14 he dwelt among us Jesus our Emmanuel and next week uh spoiler alert next week we're going to have uh we're going to talk about Emmanuel but this week we're talking about the word and how God took his spirit himself and put himself in human form so that we could relate We could get it. We could understand him. We can relate to another person. Spirits are hard for us to relate to. So God put himself in human flesh so that we could relate. The word became flesh. Well, let's look at three things this passage tells us about the word this morning. In John chapter 1 and verse 1 where we read this morning, we see that the word is the creator. The word is the creator. Look at John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All, I like to underline that word in my Bible, all things were made by Him, Him being the Word. And without Him, the Word, was not anything made that was made. Now skip down to verse 10. He was in the world, 
and the world was made by him. Here in John chapter 1, we read about the word being the creator. The word is the creator. In Genesis 1.1, we see that God created the heaven and the earth. There in the same chapter, we see that the spirit is, was involved in creation. And then here in John chapter 1, we see that the son was, a cre was the creator. Jesus Christ, the creator. The word was the creator. Without him was not anything made that was made. Now Jesus was never created. Look at verse 1. In the beginning was the word. You say, see, well, he was only there in the beginning. No, no, you've got to realize, again, God is speaking to us on terms that we can understand. In the beginning of God's creation, we don't understand everlasting to everlasting. Our mind can't grasp that, but we can grasp a start and an end. And in the beginning, before anything was created, was the Word, because the Word was not created. The Word was God, and the Word was with God. So Jesus is the Creator. He was never created. He has always been he was always with God. He is always God. And he is the creator of all. And now we were told this before he even came. Listen to Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. We were told before he even came that he was going to be the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, would be born into this world as a child, a son. A son was given. We were told this after his ascension. Keep your finger there in John 1 and turn with me, if you would, to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. And this can be found on page 1017 in the Pew Bible. 1017, Colossians chapter 1. And we're going to see that we were told this after Jesus' ascension that he is the creator. <clears throat> Colossians 1, beginning in verse 12. It says, Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, capital S, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God. See that? The invisible God, the spirit that is hard for us to relate to. Jesus is the image. He's, we can cast our eyes upon him. The firstborn of every creature. For by him, the Son, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. So we see before he was born, we were told that he was going to be the mighty God. We were told at his birth that he is God in the flesh. And we were told after he even ascended into heaven that all things were created by him. He is everlasting. He is the creator. He is always existing, and he is the creator and sustainer of all. Jesus isn't just another of many religious figures. He is the mighty God, the creator of all, the Word. God communicated creation. God communicated to us through the Word. The second thing we see in this passage in verses 4 through 12 of John chapter 1 is that the Word is the life giver. The Word is the life giver. Back there in John chapter 1 and verse 4, Notice it says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. 
speaking of Jesus. He is the life, the light. This world is spiritually dark by nature. Sin's curse has touched all parts of nature. That's the devastation of sin. And so by nature, this world is spiritually dark. And when Jesus Christ came into the world, he lit up this world and brought life. He is the life. He said himself, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He is life, and his life shines in the darkness because of the light of life. Think about this. The world is spiritually dark, and Jesus comes into the world and brings light. He brings everlasting life through his birth. The word is life. He's the giver of life. And notice the darkness comprehended it not in verse 4 and 5. In verse 9, he is the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. You say, uh, Pastor, does that mean that everybody that's born into this world is saved? Because he lights every man that comes into the world. No. What it means is that there's in every single person born into this world, there is a God consciousness that is reaching out to God. Are you hearing this? There's a God consciousness in every person that's born. They're all lit with this God consciousness, every one of us. And we're responsible with what we do with what God put in us. The more that we uh, search for that light, the more that we uh, go follow that light that God has given in the soul of every man, the more light God will reveal to us. And the more that we block it out and say no and we reject it, well, God will allow us to have our way. The light is in every man. There is some kind of God. You say, well, what about atheists and agnostics? How, how do you explain that? Well, the way we explain that is they have chosen to reject him to one degree or another in their heart. Romans chapter 1. The Bible says very clearly that it's a choice that has been made. But God has put within every man that there is a God. And how we respond to the light that we've been given is how he will continue to give us more. He came into the world... And the Bible says in verse 10, the world knew him not. So look at this. The darkness comprehended it not. The world knew him not. His own received him not. Verses 9, 10, 11. The darkness did not comprehend him. The world did not know him. His very own people, the Jews, did not receive him. This is the light of the world. Life, eternal life. He came into the world. The darkness says we don't understand. We don't understand this light. In verse 11, he came into his own and his own received him. Now, he came into his own people and they said, no. We're not going to accept him. We're going to reject him. Verse 10 tells us the world didn't know him. He created the world. He came into the world and the world knew him not. They had no idea. This is the light that God has given every man, the word. But if the darkness didn't comprehend it and the world didn't know him and his own chose to reject him, then what? Well, verse 12 is a great breath of fresh air. Look at verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So anybody who chooses to receive him and believe on his name, to them, he will give the power to become the sons of God. And that light that came into the world is now translated into life eternal because it has been received. I wonder this morning, could that be you? Maybe you're one of the ones who have not yet received the light that God has given you in Jesus Christ. This day, especially in America, and if you're here today, God has gone over and above revealing himself unto you. You can't say that you don't comprehend him. God has made it clear to us how to be saved in this day and age in America. You can't say I don't comprehend it. You can't say I don't know him because he's been revealed to us today. Jesus, God's son, the word has been revealed. You can't say I don't know who he is. It's very clear. Jesus is the savior. But you can say, I won't receive him. So the onus now is on individuals who know. Once we've heard the truth, the onus is now on us. 
And if you're here this morning and you've heard the truth of salvation, you have a choice to make. Are you going to receive Christ or are you going to reject Christ? Receiving Christ will make you, as you saw in verse 12, a child of God. And heaven is your home, eternal life. Would you do that this morning? Would you choose to trust Jesus this morning? Third and finally in this passage, we see that Jesus, the Word, is God's image. Look at verse 14 there. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You know, we've all heard people say, I wish I could just see God. If I could see God, I'd believe him. Hey, God revealed himself to us in his Son, the Word. The Word was God saying, here I am. This is me. We have beheld the glory of God in Jesus Christ. Listen to this. John 14, 7 through 9 says, If ye had known me, this is Jesus speaking, If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. In other words, Jesus, if you'll just show us God the Father, we'll, we'll be fine. We'll believe. We'll be okay. Jesus, says unto him, Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? Listen to what Jesus says. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? <laughs> Jesus says very plainly to one of his disciples, very clearly, you're asking me to show you my father. Philip, how long have you been with me? If you have seen me, you have seen my father. God in flesh. God gave himself to us. He communicated himself to us through the word. John 10, 30, Jesus says, I and my father are one. He's very clear. And if you study John 10, leading up to that the statement that Jesus made, the Jews were saying, come on, man, tell us plainly. You've been playing games with us. Are you the Christ? And so Jesus makes it very plain in John 10, 30. I and my Father are one. You know what they did in verse 31? Picked up stones to kill him because he claimed to be God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. We saw God. God in the flesh. God inserted himself into human history and made it unmistakable that it was him. He gave us specific prophecies about his birth. And then when he lived on earth, he fed the thousands who did not have bread. He brought back people from the dead. He drove out demons from the demon bound. He made the lepers skin like new. The storm dissipated when he told it to. He took jars of water, turned it into wine. He even healed this heart of mine. It was unmistakable that God had come. And today through his word, it is unmistakable that God has communicated to us through his son in the flesh, the word. We can't deny it. We can't say we don't understand it. We can't. We can't say we don't comprehend. We can't say we, we want to re receive him or reject him as the only options we have. Today, he has made himself clear. God in the flesh. That's what Christmas is all about. If you'd stand with me, please, and our musicians would come. If you've been waiting for God to speak to you about salvation, I believe he has this morning through his word. 2,000 years ago, he sent his only begotten son. God is a spirit, and he chose to become a man so that we could relate. Look at all that he did for you. Look at how he made it so that we couldn't miss him. And now the choice is ours. Am I going to take what I know and believe, or am I going to choose to reject? This morning, as our folks here sing, 
Let's do business with God.